21st of September 2024, John Hammond coming to you from Norwich, UK. Trevor and I went to uh, our usual monthly men's breakfast called Caleb here in Norwich, UK. I had invited about 20 men from around Norfolk, UK. Uh, a few came. Some obviously couldn't make it, um, short notice, etc. And we looked at Romans on a video, some good teaching by a man from America. Um, can't remember his name, it doesn't matter at this stage. But Romans 6 and Romans 7. Some very, very good teaching. Very simple, but very good. And then we broke up into our usual discussion group. Sometimes we have two or three. Today we had one large group and a free-flowing discussion in the context of Romans 6 and 7 by individual men sharing where they were in the Holy Spirit in their journey heavenwards, honestly and openly. Men sharing with men, which is different to men sharing in a mixed company situation. And it was... This is why it's so necessary for men to have a men's group in a local church situation where you can be honest with each other before God. Talking about unique men's issues from the men's point of view. And I'm not going to discuss what was discussed because that's the point. What's said in the room stays in the room. But suffice to say, we're growing together in Christ the Holy Spirit is helping us to share with one another our experience of change in our lives. So I highly recommend it if you're in Norfolk, UK, Norwich, UK, Norfolk, UK, or East Anglia in the UK, or anywhere in the UK, it's something you could come to, even if it's just holidaying in the area, just come to that men's group, Caleb. Norwich, UK. So that was this morning. And then Trevor and I went to visit a family we know. And of course, you know this by now, I'm sure. I hope every biblical marriage in Christ is the church, the body of Christ of two. And whatever children are within that biblical marriage in Christ, they are the congregation, the family in Christ together with their mother and father in Christ. A biblical marriage in Christ, according to scripture. And of course, the, the children in Christ are brought up with the knowledge of God, Jesus, Yahweh, the Holy Spirit, the Bible. The children belong to Christ. They've always belonged to Christ because they've been brought up in the presence of God because of their, quote, Christian parents. But I'm talking about born again, Holy Spirit filled parents in Christ in a biblical marriage in Christ. A naturally born man of God married to a naturally born woman of God. Born in Christ, born again, born in Christ, born from heaven above, filled with the Holy Spirit individually and together. Husband, the head of the wife, wife prophesying to the husband when and if he gets things slightly not right. Wrong, because we all can get into error. Slight or gross error, we all must submit to the Holy Spirit to be corrected. So a naturally born man of God married to a naturally born woman of God, both born again, both filled with the Holy Spirit, both baptized with the Holy Spirit, spiritual gifts are exercised between those two in this body of Christ, of two together in Christ. And the children, of course, are brought up in the way they are to go on the narrow way ahead, one day of salvation at a time, to go to school at whatever age and to recognize that the children at school will not necessarily 
believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. So whatever percentage these days of school children who are born again, it's unknown. There may be some research, some statistics out there, but I don't know. Maybe you do. You can put a link on about research. Percentages of high school children who claim to be born again, Holy Spirit filled children in Christ at high school age. All those years ago, um, going back to probably the 70s, 80s, something called Christian unions started appearing within high schools where true Christian children were encouraged to have a, let's put it in quotes, a club for Christians to meet once a week to discuss the things of God. And at that stage in the 80s, certainly Youth for Christ, a ministry in the UK, Youth for Christ workers would go in to facilitate teenagers running a Christian union. And that was the 1980s. But of course, this is 40 years on now. And I don't know whether many high schools have something called the Christian Union or the equivalent of the Christian Union. Again, I don't know the statistics. That would be an interesting research project to carry out in schools where today, 2024, it's multi-faith. And schools are very much multi-faith in their religious education. It is usually about comparative religion. Christianity was a unique religion in this country, and England and the UK generally were known to be a Christian country. But of course that has changed every decade as more and more immigrants came in bringing their own religion and so society has changed in its outlook where certainly in the 21st century acceptance of people of other religions and none has become the norm. Even in certain types of denomination they have caved in to the pressure of political government of this country and um, certain types of denominations have become as much political as the political government of this country. Now you can work it out yourselves with diversity laws, equality laws, equal pay laws, contracts, job descriptions, it's obvious to me uh, for many years now, for over 30 years, how churches have become businesses. And not just businesses, worldly businesses, using worldly methods and practices, structures, management uh, skills, uh, management methods, management tools of how to, quote, run a church as a business charitable or not it is what it is but what i'm describing to you is the 21st century version of christian churches which are unbiblical elders of the local church or elders in the city of ephesus say they were elders in the city of every city and every region there were known elders, and of course, biblical elders were clearly defined as the husband of one wife who's brought his or their children up properly in the way of Christ. Now, that seems obvious as a prerequisite for anyone who is called an elder of a local church or a citywide church or a national church, they must have been a husband of one wife who's brought his, their children up properly in the way of Christ. Elders. So Jesus has restructured the body of Christ right across the world as one body which is not an organization. 
Now you might argue against what I've just said, but I'm telling you the truth. What was true for Ephesus, Ephesians 4, is true across the city of Norwich, UK, Norfolk, UK, UK itself, and across the world. The body of Christ, we are in Christ, who's in this world and not of this world. That came up today, and Jesus said it in one of the Gospels, John's Gospel, that the, the disciples are in this world and not of the world. And it's not just talking about disciples 2,000 years ago or so. Every one of us who is born again, forgiven of your sins, baptized with the Holy Spirit, you are a disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. That he is the pastor. He is the shepherd of you as a sheep. He is shepherding you, directly and indirectly. Directly by the Holy Spirit, because you're born again, because you have the Holy Spirit within you, your spirit, your soul, and your body in that order. You have the Holy Spirit in your conscience. Your conscience has been cleaned by the blood of the Lamb. Your human spirit the temple for the Holy Spirit, cleaned by the blood of the Lamb. Through your full and genuine repentance of sin, you are clean before God, on the inside. Clean. Spirit and soul and body. I'm not talking about your sinful nature. The sinful nature exists, but you, I, must control ourself and any 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 sinful thoughts that come to you you and i must take them captive and bind them up and not let that thought come into being it's just a thought it applies to jokes you have a joke come into your mind which you find personally funny at someone else's expense you take that thought that jokey thought captive and you keep it to yourself because mocking someone is a sin it's a form of belittling bullying if you like it's a sin so talking of sin someone's been talking to us recently Trevor and I about the fact that Christians say things Christians run Christians down Christians say things behind the Christians back make allegations accusations etc 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 it's called gossip slander and in writing it's called libel so the feedback to anybody who claims that people are saying things about you, that Christians are saying things about you, is to nip it in the bud and tell that person. If you're hearing Christians running down other Christians, they're not Christians. I'm going to say that again, very slowly. If you are a Christian and you're running somebody down, gossip, slander, liable, you are not a Christian because you're running somebody down behind their back. You're, you're what's called a backstabber. And God is aware of what you do. Stabbing people in the back by your comments. And of course, the sin of the mind. You can even think angry thoughts against your brother and claim you love God, whom you haven't seen, but you are angry with your brother, whom you have seen. And you may not even call that person a brother or a sister. Then it comes to the question, are you born again? As a Christian who's gossiping and slandering and libeling people, would you call yourself a born again Christian yourself? Has Jesus saved you from sin, including the sin of gossip and slander and libel? 
Many churchgoers claim to be Christian by the very act of going to a, quotes, Christian church building. They claim to be Christians because they go to church, in quotes, or they're born into a, quotes, Christian family, or they were christened and that they will claim they are Christian because they're being christened, christened, or even dedicated by their parents to be Christians, and they go to Sunday school, and they go to the youth group. They may even they may even claim to be born again, baptized in water. They may even claim to be born again, baptized in water, with the Holy Spirit. But they are not practicing born again, spirit filled, Christ like disciples. And that's one of the tests you can have with people claiming to be a Christian. Okay, great. What's your testimony? And if they don't know what to say, it's because they don't know what testimony means. What can you testify? about Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about head knowledge. Many people think in their minds they're saved. They can even quote scriptures about what Christians believe in terms of salvation. They've been going to church and they know all the key phrases, the Christian words. They know what Christians do. They know what Christians say. They sing the songs, they pray the prayers, and they claim to be Christians. I think I'm a Christian, therefore I am a Christian. Or I feel I'm a Christian, I feel good when I worship God, therefore I must be a Christian. Well, of course, God knows the heart and the mind, the spirit and the soul and the body. Jesus knows who his shepherd is sorry, who his sheep are. The shepherd knows his sheep, and he calls them by name. And each sheep hear the voice of Jesus Christ, the shepherd. And that's another test of Christians. Do you hear what Jesus is saying? And again, if they are struggling to make an answer to that, that's another sign. Many claim to love Jesus, <coughs> Excuse me. Many claim to love Jesus, being one of his sheep, being in the flock, in the church situation. But when you start talking about obedience, my sheep obey my voice, they start to backtrack. Now let's leave it there. My wife is here. We're off on a trip. God bless you, brethren of the one God. Keep obeying God, and he'll keep blessing you increasingly. Submit to God, resist the devil, and remember, Jesus is coming soon, and we, I, must be ready. God bless you.